so center today we are thrift flipping so taking maybe old garments fabric that you've had around for a while and turning it into something new so i've got a selection of accessories that i've made using old garments and um they're garments that hold little stories whether we'll share some of the funny pictures with you that show why i still have them i like the fabric but they're just not things I'd wear anymore. A lot of the things I've made today have been made using this fabric. It was a dress and it was a dress with two of these squares and it draped and it had a handkerchief hem. You'll be able to see on the picture how it once was. I've created some of the samples with this dress. The other thing that I've used, you'll see a before picture, is a garment that my washing machine liked just as much as me so it chose to eat it. So sadly, I could no longer wear it. And that's this lovely fabric here. Um, that's gonna work really well for some of the other samples. So a few things we're going to have a go at. Hair accessories, so scrunchies, hair bows, whether it be on a bobble or a scrunchie with a nice tie. We're gonna try the bow tie. Could also be a hair bow for a girl um, and We've had a go with the tiny, tiny little scraps, actually making cards that you could send to someone who loves fabric. So they're some of the items made here. A bit of fabric manipulation to maybe make a brooch on its own, or you could add these to a plain t-shirt, summer top. Um, we've sewn the buttons on and we've used tiny scraps of fabric to make these samples. We've got a necklace where we've used that lovely dress fabric again and trapped inside. It could be an old necklace that you want to trap inside. Um, I've got an old bracelet here that's no longer needed. I've got some marbles that seem to come in Christmas crackers and be everywhere. Um, little woolen balls that I had anyway at home so we can try using them and this was from a cracker actually it had beads on the cracker so within there they're very small but that would be a far more delicate necklace if you went for that style so we're gonna have a go at making those you see if you can have a go too and share them with us Okay, I have two lengths of the fabric. It's actually 90 centimetres wide. Because it's so silky, I have pressed it down one side and cut it using a rotary cutter. So I've measured it and tried to make sure that the beads that I put in will fit. I'll have my centimetre seam allowance. What I will do, this one here was made with the 90 centimetres. And I'd actually like it to be a bit longer and I'd like to have these as long ties that go down the back. So I'm going to join the two 90s together and work from there. So to do that, I'm just going to join face to face, join them together. And then we will sew them up. So I've joined the two lengths together. And I'm going to just press that open so that we don't get a bulky seam. And then I'll be joining it together to make the long channel. Let's get these separated. There we go. So that's now open. And then I'm going to put right sides together just as they were before when I prepared the fabric. And I'm gonna sew a one centimeter seam allowance all the way down, and then I'm gonna turn it through. So now we've got 1.8 meters to turn inside out. So there's lots of different ways. I quite like just a safety pin, attach it to one side, and then you just keep sending it along the channel. Start to encourage the fabric to turn inside out, and then just keep going. You keep hold of the safety pin 
with one hand and pull with the other. The aim is just to get it all the way through and then it's really quite easy to pull that end. So see you in 1.8 metres. So it's all turned the correct way. I'm going to press it to encourage the seam to stay on the inside in the middle and then it'll be nice and flat on the front and then we can start putting our beads or whatever you've chosen inside but pressing it really starts to make it look neat you can see with this fabric it loves to wriggle so I'm just going to get all of this pressed and then we'll move to the next step so old bracelet into many pieces I'm going to use these because I think the weight of the beads are good to hold the necklace down but I like the size of the woolen um, balls to be nearer the bottom so I'm going to start with them and just feed in the channel make sure it's halfway you can see halfway because of the stitch and then you just tie a knot and it's up to you how tight this knot is with this fabric it's really easy because it's so slippy just to pull all the way and make it really tight then do one the other side and you're just working in symmetry do one side do the other side so that's why I've got three of this size that will start the pattern off remain um, empty but what I've done is on the end I've sent the fabric back in I've pressed it and I've just put a clip on and I'm going to top stitch across there as I ironed it I did put the seam to the edge again so it will lay flat once it's tied up down your back like so so I'm just going to do it with this one so you can see the seams down the center it's just about bringing it back so that the seam is on one side and ironing that lovely and flat. Once it's flat, you can then send the end in to make that neat end and it could be blunt or you could do it on a bit of an angle. I've done that on a slight angle because I just think it looks nice if it is hanging down. Just iron all the way back down to the bead. I just didn't want that seam to be at the bottom as I put all the beads in. So there we are, we're back down to the bead now. Come back to the top, send in a good centimetre. The shape you want so I slightly bring it on an angle so I'm sending the seam part down further leaving the top up final press then I'll clip it and then I will stitch is ready to wear and of course it's totally adjustable might want it more like a choker with a lot hanging down or you might like it quite long with just a small tie but that's your necklace just another little addition to our um, recycled necklace here um, you remember I cut the bracelet up and it had these silver rings as part of the bracelet I've actually added them where the knots are and I've used the other beads that were within the bracelet 
and that I think has worked out quite effectively as well so it's always worth looking around things that you have in your sort of accessories um, could be another little addition to your necklace so our next thing to upcycle or thrift swap is tiny scraps of fabric and I've got these little mini they look like embroidery hoops from the internet and you can see on these cards here I've used the satiny style fabric but I'm going to use this one that's got the purple sort of paper aeroplanes in because I want to use little buttons on this card. Now these could make little pictures, um, could be something in your sewing room where you have little pictures with your little embroidery hoops. Some people make them into necklaces or earrings. Um, I always turn to cards so I've had a go at making these and we've even had a go at sewing onto the card and um, you could sew onto fabric and then mount that onto a card so there's loads of ideas of things that you could do and I'm sure many of you are doing these things already so what I needed to do to make the little embroidery hoop small scrap of fabric I've just got some stabilizer you could use and I did on the satin I used just a little bit of interfacing so it gave it strength and made it big enough around the first piece that you put it on so choose the thing that you want to show in the hoop and I want to show this purple pattern here and you just kind of hold it almost like a button and then you just place it into the hoop so it's not solid and secure at this stage I've already put in the little tiny screw and what I actually needed to do was use a screwdriver with some pliers just to hold that and really tighten it up the other thing that I did was I got some sort of multi-purpose glue and I put it around the back here so one I could cut this off and just either use my finger or like a cocktail stick just to push these parts down also if you're pushing down this will stay lovely and flat with the top so um, that worked really well once you've packed everything in you can see this is just a little bit too big you place the back piece on that comes with it and then that's all trapped in so I definitely think it's worth having some fabric behind so it keeps this pushed up and it can't go back in but when you tighten it it stays lovely and together like so um, my idea for this is again it's going to be a little bit like the Christmas ball balls that I've created here I'd have this one maybe hanging on this really decorative one here and then I could stick little buttons on to keep the textile theme going I've used a neon thread you could use a gel pen just to add on little bows you could write a comment on could be Christmas cards could be a thank you card um, I've just tried to come up with some little corny sayings because it's bright fabric merry and bright added a few doodles on Merry Christmas I hope Santa brings fabric so these could be for your textile friends could be for someone who loves sewing you could send this to them I love you more than you love fabric um, some of the little jokes that we have about ourselves so um, just lots of ideas of ways that you can use even the tiniest bits of fabric to make something that's handmade thoughtful and different so our next thrift flip is making a scrunchie um, could look like so you could make the bow which is very easy to take on and off of the scrunchie and add it to a hair bobble um, make it bigger smaller I'll talk about that as we make it you might want to make a smaller scrunchie it's quite sort of common now to have lovely sort of satin scrunchies if you've got curly hair it's meant to not damage your hair as much so take the pattern and use it as you wish this scrunchie has been made with 60 centimeters of fabric by 10 I folded it in half and given it a little press so it's ready to sew I'm going to use a centimetre seam allowance and then we will turn it through the correct way 
and insert the elastic. So centimetre seam allowance all the way along, I've tied off at either end. I'm going to use a safety pin again just to turn it through. So safety pin in, start to push that safety pin down, encourage the fabric to start going through and carry on. turned it through I do like to press it so that the seam is along one edge I think it helps to bring it together nicely so something I do I've got a little sponge here is if the fabric just needs bringing together just having a little bit of moisture on your finger makes the fabric move where you want it to otherwise you just feel like the fabrics moving through your fingers and that can give you a really neat edge then so it's all pressed looking a lot nicer now one end I'm going to prepare for once we've put the elastic in so I'm just going to send in about a centimeter of fabric to create a nice neat edge give that a press so it's sitting in the right position the other end you don't need to because that will be inside that end there we go so that should hold enough for once we've got the elastic in the elastic again I'm doing a bit of thrift flipping you might have some elastic left over from making masks during Covid this was from a swimsuit you need about 23 centimeters and this actually has got a really nice stretch to it so I'm gonna give it a go and Again, if you send it through on a safety pin, you can feel it as you go along. Some people clip it to one end so they don't risk losing it all inside. But I'm just going to keep hold of one end as I go. So the elastic is about to come out there. Because this elastic is quite thick, I'm going to sew it together like so on the machine. So I'm going to make sure it is laying flat. If you're using a thinner elastic, if it is the kind of elastic you used on the mask, you might want to use two pieces to give it a little bit more strength. You could bring it together and tie a knot, but because of this thickness, you can imagine tying a knot in that is not going to be very easy to do, plus it's going to create too much bulk. So if I take the safety pin off, you could pin that in place. I'm going to just get that under the machine and sew that together. I've got my needle in option so I can just pivot on the corners and just make sure it's nice and strong. So with the elastic together, either with a knot or sewn, I'm going to send that join just into the scrunchie because I'm going to be sewing over that elastic. So what I'm going to do is join up the seam with the seam on the one that I pressed before. Send that inside, lay it out flat and get the elastic to sit in the middle rather than either side just check both sides you could clip or pin to hold that in place all you've got to do put a top stitch over the top and then you'll have a finished scrunchie just tie that off your finished scrunchie can then sort of distribute all the ruffles along the scrunchie so that's worked well trim off any threads and we'll have a go at creating the ribbon part now so that would tie around maybe where the join is so you never see it 
So now we're going to make the bow. It's made in this lovely silky fabric, so it does hang really well and it does kind of lend itself to being quite long. So I'm gonna make the same size again. Of course, you could make it shorter and then it could look like so, but it also looks nice just on a bobble or tied in your hair as it is. So for instance, that's another form of the bobble. So it is something you can play around with the fabric that you have and the size that you know you'd wear. So this size, I've taken a piece of fabric and I instantly folded it in half. So I folded it over that way and pressed it because this fabric is notorious for just slipping everywhere. Now that fabric was 56 centimetres long, folded it in half and when it's folded in half you should have 28 centimetres. I'll just tell you the depth of this. I've gone 7 centimetres in depth so that would be 56 long by 14 and then folded in half to make seven. Now it's got the point at one end and then it scoops back in because that's where once you've done a knot it then starts to scoop out into the bow. Um, but you want a good amount of fabric in the middle so it creates a nice knot so hence this shape. So I will just need to turn it face to face and sew that together. So again, because this fabric loves to slip about, I could fold it the opposite way and just press it. Ready, wanting to flip about. So let me just press this face to face, which you could do in the first place. Definitely have your fabric folded face to face in the first place, makes it a lot easier. So 56 by seven and the shape of the bow that you want. I'm going to pop it under the machine. You could pin or clip. I'm going to pop it under and rely on the machine to pull it through. Centimetre seam allowance, but I'm going to leave a gap in the middle and I can sew that up later once I've turned it through. Both sides of the bow have been sewn. I've left the centre open because that is where I will turn through. But before I turn through, I'm going to clip the point so that we get a nice sharp point when I turn that through. The rest of it, I'm not worried. It will all be inside the bow and just add to how it looks. And the centre part definitely adds to the bulk to make a nice bow. So you can use something that's blunt, pen with the lid on, pencil, just to push everything through. And then once it's through, you can push the point to look really neat. I'm going to use the point of the pencil here just to push the corners into a nice neat point. I will press it so it will look a lot sharper and neater. Just that one as well. There we go. And then I'm going to use my little sponge again just to help move the fabric to where I want it. And I'm going to press all the way along that sewn seam so it goes lovely and flat but also the edge where we folded it so that you get that lovely neat appearance and it becomes flat like so. So all pressed now. I've still got the gap in the middle. I haven't worried too much about making it the shape that it was. I've sent that fabric inside 
and it's quite straight now but the bulk of that fabric is going to add to when we tie the knots it's going to make it a good size so I'm just going to join that together simple top stitch especially this fabric we would love to fray any threads and then use that bow as you wish either on your scrunchie or on your hair bobble or even I guess you could attach it to a hair clip you could try that instead so you could just pass it through a hair clip tie it in a bow and then you'd clip that in your hair and away you go as I say, make it different sizes. If you use a satiny fabric, it's going to drape more. If you use, this is just a poly cotton and a lot shorter, but that creates more of a short bow, but it doesn't hang like the satiny fabric would. So have a go. All the different ideas there for different accessories, all using things that I had in my wardrobe that I definitely wouldn't wear anymore as they were. You might want to visit a local charity shop and see what they've got and away you go so please do share with us we love seeing your makes and um, we'll see you for the next sew along in march <laughs>